Welcome back Symbiote fans. Venom The Last Dance throws Eddie Brock and Venom into their biggest battle yet, and they're not alone. This time, Eddie's not just up against government agents and alien monsters. He's joined by an entire roster of symbiotes with their own unique powers, personalities, and backstories. From familiar faces to surprising new creations, this video breaks down every symbiote featured in Sony's latest adventure, along with their hosts and roles in the fight against Null, the symbiote god. So, suit up and get ready. Because it's time to dive into every symbiote in Venom, The Last Dance. 1. Venom and Eddie Brock, the Lethal Protector We start, of course, with Eddie Brock and Venom. By now, Eddie and Venom are bonded in more ways than one, having faced Riot and Carnage in previous films and even crossed into the multiverse in Spider-Man, No Way Home. However, the stakes are higher than ever in The Last Dance, as Eddie and Venom have become fugitives. They're hunted not just by the law, but also by Null's terrifying symbiote hunters, known as Xenophages. A big plot point in The Last Dance is Venom's Codex. In the comics, a symbiote codex is like a DNA map of every host a symbiote has bonded with. And Null wants Venom's codex to break free from his prison on Clintar. This leads to an intense final battle, where Eddie and Venom face Null's forces. In a twist, Venom sacrifices himself to destroy the codex, seemingly vanishing to save Eddie. But post-credits tease that Venom's story might not be over, hinting at a potential return. 2. Patrick Mulligan, first with Toxin, then the new Teal symbiote. Next, we have Detective Patrick Mulligan. Mulligan was introduced in Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and briefly bonded with Carnage's offspring, assumed to be Toxin. In the comics, Toxin was Carnage's son and was originally bonded to Mulligan. However, in The Last Dance, it's revealed that Toxin didn't stay with Mulligan and abandoned him leaving him near death. He's later found and taken to Area 55, a government facility that's studying symbiotes as part of the Imperium project. At Area 55, Dr. Teddy Payne, who heads the Imperium project, introduces Mulligan to a new symbiote, a teal, serpent-like creation unique to the movie. This new symbiote revives Mulligan, giving him a second chance to help stop Null's invasion. Unfortunately, Mulligan and his new symbiote are the first to give their lives in the battle against the Xenophages. It's a tragic ending, but one that shows his dedication to the fight. 3. Dr. Teddy Payne in Agony, the Speedster Symbiote Dr. Teddy Payne, portrayed by Juno Temple, is the brains behind the Imperium Project. She's loosely inspired by Dr. Thaddeus Payne from the comics, a villain who has crossed paths with both Venom and Moon Knight. Dr. Payne doesn't initially fight in the movie, focusing instead on her scientific work. However, when things go sideways, she ends up bonding with a purple symbiote that looks a lot like Agony from the comics. Agony is one of the original Life Foundation symbiotes and is a familiar character to fans. In The Last Dance, Agony enhances Payne's speed, a trait connected to Payne's backstory about being struck by lightning as a child. This new ability makes her a key player in the fight against Null's forces, and while she survives the events of the movie, her future with Agony remains open, leaving room for more in Sony's universe. 4. Sadie Christmas and Lasher, the new She-Venom Next up is Sadie Christmas, a scientist working under Dr. Payne in the Imperium Project. Sadie, played by Clark Bacco, becomes a key ally for Eddie and Venom. When Eddie is captured, Sadie risks her life to free him, but in the chaos of the Xenophage attack, she's forced to bond with a green symbiote, which resembles Lasher. In Marvel Comics, Lasher is another Life Foundation symbiote. The connection here is fun. One of Lasher's previous hosts in the Absolute Carnage storyline was also named Sadie, making this an intentional callback. Together with Lasher, Sadie becomes a powerful She-Venom, fighting alongside Venom in the final showdown. Her bond with Lasher and her bravery make her a standout character in The Last Dance. 5. Jim the Security Guard and Phage 
Jim, a security guard, unexpectedly enters the fray when he's attacked by a Xenophage. Mortally wounded, he bonds with a yellow-orange symbiote to save his life. This symbiote resembles Phage, another member of the Life Foundation family. Together, Jim and Phage join Venom and the others in the battle. Phage's fiery nature complements the character's backstory, making Jim's unlikely heroism a memorable part of the story. 6. The Mystery Symbiotes in Area 55 The Last Dance takes us to Area 55, where several symbiotes are held and studied. In this lab, we encounter a range of symbiotes with their hosts, each unique and powerful in their own way. One of them is a silvery-white symbiote that bonds with a female scientist who's hinted to have a personal connection with Sadie Christmas. Sadie even asks her if she's spoken to her family, showing their shared concern about the threat Null poses. There's also an intriguing combination. Two blue and purple symbiotes fuse with their hosts to form a two-headed warrior. This fusion could be a nod to the hybrid symbiote from the comics, a creature that was created when the Life Foundation symbiotes merged into one. While the movie doesn't show us much about the individual hosts before they bond, this unique fusion makes for a visually striking addition to the final battle. 7. The Fire-Powered Red Symbiote – A Nod to Scream? Lastly, The Last Dance introduces a red symbiote with fire-based abilities, a character whose host is never revealed. This mysterious symbiote could be Sony's take on Scream, the final Life Foundation symbiote in the comics. Scream has typically had fire-based powers, and this particular symbiote's abilities make it a natural fit for the fiery attack scene in the movie's climactic scenes. This character adds a final layer of intrigue, possibly setting up more for the franchise down the road. Each symbiote in Venom. The Last Dance brings something new to the table, giving Eddie and Venom the allies they need to face Null and his Xenophages. From old comic favorites like Toxin, Agony, Lasher, and Phage to new creations like the Teal Serpent symbiote and the Two-Headed Hybrid, this final showdown is a symbiote fan's dream. It's a world brimming with dark, chaotic energy, perfectly capturing the high-stakes essence of Sony's Venomverse. Is this really the end for Venom? Do you think Eddie will return? And would you want to see Null become Sony's big bad in a future crossover? Marvel fans, the stage is set for even more symbiote chaos, and we can't wait to see where this story goes next. See you in the next video.